This video is about how to nest conditionals inside of one another. So, so far, we've just had one level of decision making. We've basically been able to say, is this condition true? If not, is this condition true? If not, is this condition true? But sometimes the logic that we need to control what our programs do is more complicated. And so, for example, uh, building on the work that we've been doing so far, what if we had different kinds of equations for different vegetation types depending on their ages? So old trees have a different equation than young trees. We can do that by nesting one conditional inside of another. And so if we just needed to do this for trees, we could modify uh, this chunk of code here to have a conditional statement itself. So what would that look like? So inside of this conditionals code block, inside its curly brackets, we could add a new if statement that said if the age is less than five, open up some curly brackets, then we want to use one equation. And that equation could be mass is equal to 1.6 times the volume raised to the 0 0.8. Else, in other words, if age is greater than or equal to five, use this equation that we used before. And so I'm going to cut that equation and move it inside uh, this chunk of code. And so now the way that this conditional will work is it will check to see if the vegetation type is tree. If it is, it will then check to see if age is less than five, in which case it will run this line of code. Otherwise, it will run this line of code. And if the vegetation type isn't tree, then it will skip over this whole block of code here and then go on to check the next condition. Now, since we're inside a function, we just added a new variable, so we also need to add it up here. And then we need to rerun our function here. Remember, because we need to redefine that function. So I'm going to hit Enter from the bottom. And now, if we run est mass uh, with 1.6 and tree, but add the age 4, we'll get one answer. But if we run the same function uh, with the same inputs, but a different age of 6, we'll get a different answer. And we can actually still run this with other options, uh, even without an age, because of something funny about the way that R handles variables and functions, because we never end up needing that age for grasses or for shrubs. And so when we run this for tree, for this first line, The execution assigns 1.6 to volume, tree to veg type, 4 to age. It checks to see if veg type is equal to tree. That is true. So it goes into this code block, so into this area. It then checks to see if age is less than 5. It is. And so it goes into this code block and runs this line of code. It then jumps to the end of this code block because it satisfied one of the conditions, then jumps to the end of the outer code block because it satisfied its condition, and then returns the value to the outside program. If we run it instead with, say, 
shrub. It checks to see if veg type is tree. That's false, so it skips over this entire block of code. Checks to see if it's equal to grass, which is false, so it skips over this code. And then since none of the conditions have been satisfied, it sets mass to NA and then returns it. So that's the idea behind nesting conditionals. We can put a conditional inside of the curly brackets for the code block for another conditionals condition. And that allows us to make hierarchical decisions where depending on the outcome of the first conditional, we can then check another conditional to make another set of decisions. And this can get pretty tricky to figure out because you're trying to figure out exactly sort of the hierarchical diagram for how things execute uh, in order to write your code, but it can be quite useful in some circumstances.